Black Alpha Network. Home of Black Excellence. Power to the people. I think that my mother, like a lot of people, like a lot of them, like Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, uh, Harriet Tubman, they felt like they were laying tracks for the, the, the generation to come. I, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in my life. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices, somebody laid a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down. But somebody has to do something, something. <laughs> Here we are, here we are, here it go. Foundational Black Americans, Certified Black Society, Certified Summer continues as we proceed. I need you to smash that like button, bang them notifications, and subscribe to the channel. Black Alpha Network. Stay real, stay thorough, full time, all the time. It's a B1 thing. We building, we working, we shining, we grinding. All right, family, peace and love. Hope everybody's doing good. I hope you laser focus. Hope you get into the money because you know it's all about staying focused. It's all about getting to the money and it's all about holding down this B1 team. If you're doing all of that, which I know you are, then everything is lovely. And everything is lovely right now. We got a lot on our plate. We got a lot of business to get to. As I say, it's a B1 thing. It's a B1 thing. If you ain't B1, you ain't going to get it. You know what I'm saying? You might as well just go sit your ass down because this train is going to keep on moving. I said it before. The B1 train don't stop for nobody. You better hop the fuck on or get your ass tossed the fuck out. Them is the only two options. Speaking of that, one thing for certain, two things for sure. And what that is, is no matter what happens, B1 Certified Black Society Foundational Black Americans, we're going to go on and we're going to handle our business. That's what we do. It does not matter. It could be in any form, any field, any way. It could be politically. It could be socially. We're going to get the job done and take care of business. And that's what we all do. We take care of business. It don't matter what it is. When we put our mind to it, that shit get accomplished. Look around you if you don't believe me. Foundational Black Americans are out here putting in work. I'm talking about that real work. And they can't stop it. You can't come up in here half-stepping. And the beauty about us, there's no half-steppers in this circle. Ain't no half-steppers. Remind you, if black Americans were half-steppers, we would have been gone a long time ago. The fact is, we stand here on our square, can't knock us off our pivot, and it's based upon what we got on the inside. It's what we got. We got what they ain't got. We got what they want. We got what they can't have. That's B1 energy, hard work, dedication. And we've been focused right now. We've been real focused, taking care of our business. I'm talking about from the political world, the social world, business, economics, all the way through the whole spectrum. Foundational Black Americans and Certified Black Society is out here putting it work do not get it twisted we just came off of brother Marcel's campaign run and black folks were out there putting it work we did more in six months than half these other groups do in six years understand that these other groups are too busy and occupied trying to eat off our plate you understand what I'm saying these folks are coming from other countries trying to take what we create they can't come up with it on their own. They don't have the backbone. They ain't got the style. They ain't got the grace. They ain't got the passion. They ain't got none of that. They can't get their own protests rolling, so they come and hijack our protests. They can't get their own reparations, so they got to sit on our reparations panels. They can't get their own hate crime laws passed, so they do that off the back of foundational black Americans. They can't even get their own holidays, so now they all out here waving the Juneteenth flag. Y'all seen that? Y'all seen that? We've been telling them, Juneteenth ain't got nothing to do with the diaspora. Drop all that red, black, and green shit. It ain't got nothing to do with that. It's about foundational black America. Not foundational black Africa. Not foundational black Jamaica. Not foundational black Haiti. Put that shit down and go get your own. All year long, these tethers walk around and say, you FBA don't have your own culture. We really created hip hop. We really created breakdancing and graffiti. They tell us all year long that we ain't got our own culture. Come June 19th, it's happy Juneteenth, my brother. <laughs> Now, all of a sudden, we won. This is the shit we talk about. They jump in and out of our culture while trying to steal from our culture at the same motherfucking time. Uh-uh, we ain't having that. We ain't having that. We taking care of business. We taking care of real business in this bitch. And if that means your ass got to get exiled, regulated, and thrown the fuck off the field, you getting exiled, regulated, and thrown off the fucking field. Period. No more games. It's over, y'all. It's, it's done. It's done. The games is done. 
We in the 11th hour. This is the fourth motherfucking quarter. There's five seconds left. Give me the fucking ball. We're going to make the shot. That's it. The fuckery stops here. The doors are closed. The house is clean. If you not FBA, you not B1, and you not certified, your ass is not welcome, and you better not step to the front door. Or them regulators going to get you. They are always trying to separate us from our lineage. They don't like when we kick this real FBA solid game. They hate that shit. They do not like when we are B1 to the core. They don't like when we certified and solid. This is what's pissing the whole world off. I got a little news flash for everybody. If you see motherfuckers walking around right now, angry, upset, bitter, spiteful, and hating, that's because FBA is regulating. When we talk like how I'm talking right now, and we start saying B1 over everything, foundational black American over everything, certified above all. That shit has the world pissed off. Well, as we say right here on the Black Alpha Network, then they gonna be some pissed off motherfuckers in because it don't stop. The more we represent ourselves, the more angry they get. So we gonna keep on representing ourselves and they gonna stay angry then. I can give two fucks, all right? And one of them left town. You understand? This is what it is. People coming around here committing hate crimes against us and then using that to get hate crime laws passed for them. We ain't having that. People running around here trying to weasel themselves into our lineage and weasel themselves into our reparations, sitting on our panels, discussing our business. We ain't having that. Motherfuckers running around here trying to take Juneteenth and change the colors around and put their own little fucking diaspora flag on it. We ain't having that. That's some sucker shit and we'll go for sucker shit. One thing about FBA. We don't play dumb shit, all right? If you're going to be real, be real. We'd rather have a motherfucker come at us, be themselves, and just fuck up than be somebody who's trying to play us or hustle us. That's the shit that's really going to get B1 on your ass. If you don't come correct, the whole term, come correct, keep it real, that comes from us. Any word or term that is associated with authenticity comes from foundational black Americans because we are the realest people on the planet. So being the realest people on the planet, I'm going to say it like this. I want it to be everybody's duty, all my FBAs, all my certifiers. I want y'all to feel me right now. I want it to be your duty every single day to represent FBA B1 so much that you piss everybody off. They're going to be mad anyway. So let's give these motherfuckers something to be even more mad about. <laughs> we got them pissed. They don't know whether to comb the lights out their hair or pull their hair out. <laughs> they in meth distress. <laughs> you know how they say cut the grass low so the snakes will show? It's easy to see who's with us and who's against us. It's easy to see where the line is drawn in the sand. It's easy to see who's on the other side of the fence. Just represent your heritage. We don't have to figure out who's down for us. That's the beauty of being FBA, and that's the beauty of being B1. All we gotta do is just be ourselves. And by being ourselves, motherfuckers get jealous and they get mad. And that right there shows you who got your back and who don't. That shows you who's the real friend and who ain't. That shows you who's the fake ass ally and who deserves to get their ass checked. It ain't hard. It ain't hard. So every single day, walk with that FBA bop, walk with that B1 step, pivot, strut, do whatever you got to do. Make motherfuckers mad. Make them mad. I love it. Booze sound like cheers to me. Oh yeah, when it comes to FBA lineage and pride, I am the most conceited person you ever met. And I do it with a passion. Piss all the tethers off. I love it. We done been through too much and we've been too real to have people get underneath our skin. It's time we flip that shit. All that shit where black folks used to be trying to explain themselves and getting all frustrated. No, no, no. L listen, we've been subjugated to racism for 400 years. You, you just listen to me. Man, fuck that. Y'all know damn well. That ain't how certifies rock. Y'all know what I'm talking about right now. I know you know what I'm saying. I know. I can feel you right now. I can feel you. This is a family. I know y'all as a family. Y'all rock the same way I do, and I rock the same way as y'all. We don't play that explaining ourselves shit. We don't play that apology shit. For so long, for so many years, black folks, we were always trying to explain our condition, explain our plight. We was damn near apologizing for being victims of supremacy. What the fuck is that? We don't go for that no more because this is the B1 era, you know? And I always say this is the B1 era and everybody's heard me say it. The B1 era, we ushered out all that bullshit and we came in with a whole new style. And this whole new style, you can literally look right now at your CV, at your timeline, at your job walking down the street. You can literally see that shit's got the world in disarray. It's got everybody flipped upside down and shaking the whole fucking pavement. Foundational black Americans getting on our game and acting the way we act now 
has literally changed this whole country and I say it all the fucking time and I will continue to say it. I've sat here and seen the way things used to be. I see the way they are now. I seen the way black folks used to explain and apologize. I see the way we don't take no shit now. I seen the way black folks used to ask and beg and pray and I see the way we take what's ours now. A complete reversal. What they say, that shit hit different, we hitting different. We hitting different. We knocking motherfuckers out the park, grand slam, everybody coming home. The whole attitude of foundational black Americans has changed. It has. And anybody who tells you otherwise is a goddamn liar or they blind as fuck. You feel me? Everyone sees it. Foundational black Americans have went through a complete remodeling change, attitude adjustment, all of the above. And everyone knows it. Our demeanors, our persona, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we build with each other, the way we work with each other. That shit has all changed. Just from 10 years ago, definitely from 15 years ago, and definitely from 20 years ago. Go back to the Obama era, the Yes We Can era. We removed every motherfucker that was in charge back then. They ain't even around no more. People couldn't pick them out of a fucking lineup. You go get the average B1 right now, and they either stepping over the motherfuckers from back then, or they stepping around the motherfuckers from back then. Either way, those folks is getting stepped on. And it's all because of us. B1 has changed. Everybody out there, all of you guys, me, the whole team, the whole family, we on our day-to-day, -day, everyday, average basis has changed the way people look at us, the way they talk to us and the way they come at us. They don't run up on black folks like that. It seemed like every year, them videos of them running up on black folks at parks and pool parties and at stores and Karens calling the police, them videos have became lesser and lesser and lesser. Y'all notice that? I know y'all notice that. You don't see them videos like that no more. You don't see them, do you? You don't see videos of them running up on black folks like that? Nah, uh-uh, because they know better. They know that this era, this ain't the good trouble era. This is the you gonna get a good ass whooping era. And that is what I call laying down the foundational blueprint. And the blueprint has been laid down and we're going to break it down today on the Black Alpha Cast. We building, we working, we shining, we grinding. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the pull up. Make sure you smash that like button. I appreciate the pull up and make sure you put your notifications on because we cooking all summer and beyond. Know that, believe that as we proceed. Now, let's take this to the political world. We've seen what our brother Marcel Dixon was able to accomplish in a mere six months of campaigning. In six months, this brother was able to cut into Jim Coonburn and the Democrats voter turnout massively, massively. He cut in to a place that has been churning out and voting Democrat with their eyes closed. And he did this in a short amount of time. Jim Coonburn, he called up Kali Green Kamala on the phone. She had to come down. They were nervous nervous and they're more nervous now than they were on election day see they're not just afraid of the black grassroots they're afraid of what the black grassroots could do the black grassroots back in the day used to be something where people were trying to get it together this black grassroots era is where people have it together and you see it happening right now with the reparations movement you see it happening right now with brother marcel dixon i call him the on code candidate and you see it right now with the new black media which i'm a part of when you add policy politicians and news outlets that is enough to have a structure of a foundational blueprint family we are all watching in real time the game changing and it's happening right before our eyes don't ever think that you're not a part of something special don't ever let someone tell you that you're not a part of something special every one of you guys out there participating just living your day-to-day -day life i don't care if you got a damn youtube channel i don't care if you have a twitter account i don't care if you share memes if you share stories you retweet as long as you're out there permeating b1 energy and sharing the facts and dropping the truth and enlightening people on what we are accomplishing you are doing your role you're doing your role and you can look back 40 years from now when your grandkids say what was it like to be in that b1 era that changed the whole world you can say I played my role in it and don't let anybody lesser what you've done I'm telling you that everybody plays a role and we need everybody I mean that shit all are a part of this right here right now we got behind brother Marcel Dixon and imagine what happens in two years when we got more time on our watch imagine what happens then we don't have to change anything I actually told brother Marcel on the space the other night I told brother Marcel it's not just about you brother we know when it comes to him the ideas are there the policies there the passion is there we understand that now it's on us as the team to just get behind our brother even more and this isn't something that we're like dreaming up this is something that we actually have already started. The wheels are already rolling. Too many times black folks think we gotta start the engine. The engine is kicking. Put your foot on that fucking pedal and let's go. You feel me? Let's redline. And that's exactly what's happening right here, right now. Our brother Marcel Dixon is a trailblazer in every sense of the word. And we're really watching history unfold. 
we're really seeing an on-code candidate that was up in these people's faces. You seen him come and crash in events. They were doing their best to keep him out of town, keep him out the door. And he will come up in there, grab the mic and shut the whole room down. Even folks that did not want to listen to him will be sitting there shaking their head. Go watch it. Go watch it. You got all types of videos that he was posting. Listen to this one right here where he was challenging that Pete, whatever the fuck his name is, the guy up there in uh, Indiana. Marcel was G-checking him from start to finish, from beginning to end. Every little slick, slimy, fucking liberal tactic that Pete tried to use, Marcel was shutting it down. That guy couldn't even get his words out and Marcel was shutting that shit down. Before he would even finish his little snake-ass liberal tactic, Marcel would put an end to it. He says, person of color, Marcel said, I'm black. Dude says, well, keep in touch. Marcel said, I emailed you 35 times. His little assistant was trying to put it into it. Marcel said, no, nah, I ain't stopping. <laughs> this is what you get when you get an on-code candidate. And I tell you, this is the first time where we can look and see this is how real politics is supposed to operate for foundational black Americans. All this coon caucus where they serve everybody except for us. They out here writing laws for literally dogs and cats before they write them for black folks. They out here trying to make national hymns. They out here having Bible studies. Yes, Clyburn literally just said he's going have a bible study so when it come to black americans we get reparations in the form of a study and we get hate crime laws in the form of a bible study everybody else reparations means money and everyone else hate crimes means laws you see the difference that is the old era this is the new era and brother marcel is a trailblazer and he is showing everyone what it is like to have an on code candidate and it can be done so certified salute to that brother and you see right here in this clip that he was g-checking dude dude was getting mad too he's like uh, hold on yes no wait. <laughs> he do sweating and everything and this is what we have we have them literally sweating when we say they are here sweating we ain't just saying this shit metaphorically this isn't just a simile no in real life marcel dixon had the democratic party and the whole goddamn political establishment sweating the same way our brothers and sisters got them sweating out in california over reparations the same way we got them sweating over the new black media this is what it is so when we say times is real when we say this is the certified summer you better put that on your motherfucking calendar because we living it right now because they know this is something so strong that they cannot contain it they can get on the phone speed dial redial they can call up every coon every sambo every bootlick and tap dancer that they can find but like brother malcolm x said those people can't stop it because they didn't start it we started it as a matter of fact listen to brother marcel work right here it's been excluded or to a person of color who can demonstrate that their health outcomes are worse because of racism. And not a person of color, I'm black. Um, people are black, people have a unique history yes, that other right. people of color don't have. So I'm not a person of color, I'm a black man. That's right. And a unique well, there's a lot of different and overlapping patterns of exclusion, right? But yes. I understand no. why the one that's urgent that we're talking no. about now is... No, 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 I will not. Also, uh, Damn, I told you you got him. Moving on. So how can we as black people trust you when you have not done well by the black community in South Bend? How can I, the black mind, trust you when you have not done well? Well, I believe we've been... These are issues impacting black Americans' yeah, yeah, no, lives. No, no, no. Our issues are always so shut up. Don't worry about it. No, no, this is really Our issues need to be talked about. So... No one talks about black Americans. You see I'm here to talk to black Americans. There are hardly no black people here. Charleston's 50% black. No. Because we don't trust you. Moving on. What's the best way? Because I sent you 35 emails. Y'all don't respond. I was trying to send an email. Y'all don't respond. I sent you 35 emails. Info at People America. None of y'all responded to me. Let's, let's see. Woo! <laughs> when that brother get to cooking, it's for real. It's for real. Y'all seen how that played out. Ain't even gotta go there. Dude, Pete, or whatever his name is, he didn't know what the fuck was happening. Y'all see how he tried to say, well, in South Bend, Indiana, and Marcel says, yeah, you talking about South Bend, Indiana, they ain't no good, so how you gonna do good down here in Charleston? This is a brother from Charleston, South Carolina, knowing what exactly is happening to his people in Indiana. He's representing for his northern brothers and sisters while he's down in the south. I understand that because I'm down out this way in Savannah, Georgia. I know all about Bluffton County, Jasper County, Chatham County. I know all about the low country. Come on down here if you want to know what's real. So for a brother from down this way to be representing and holding down his people up top, I got to salute him because I'm also from up top. Ohio, always Don, Buckeye. So I understand how you can flip back between the north and the south. And for us to have a on-code candidate that's not only looking out for his brothers and sisters down here, 
but he's also looking out for his brothers and sisters up there. Not only is he G-checking politicians from down this way, Coonburn, he's also G-checking politicians from up that way, Pete, whatever the fuck his name is. This is what happens when you have an on-code candidate. This is what happens when you land down the foundational blueprint. It's been laid down. Now it's time for all of us to walk right down the motherfucking lane. Let's get it. Now, Congressman, you said we know Joe and Joe knows us. And Joe Biden told us that he would have our backs. But since being in office, Joe Biden has signed executive action for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. He has signed executive action for LGBTQ citizens. He has done executive action for Native Americans. But where's his executive action for Black Americans? Now, what a lot of people may not realize, I don't know, but I just learned this. Funny thing, Joe Biden got in office and he repelled a lot of stuff Donald Trump did. For a man who said he wasn't concerned with the sins of forefathers, he strove repealing past sins of Donald Trump. But what about the biggest sin and the original sin this country committed, which was the brutal enslavement of my people? And after slavery, the race massacres, the violent discrimination that kept us in poverty, the land theft, okay? Listen to the crowd, y'all. Listen to the crowd. Listen how they're clapping for Brother Marcel. And Clyburn ain't saying shit. Be one. We, black Americans, now, since 1865, black Americans own only 0.5 wealth in America. Today, we own less than 3%. Since slavery, not much has changed. God damn. Family, that's what you call a political ass whooping. He came and hit Clyburn with so many motherfucking facts, Clyburn didn't even have nothing to say. All that, why y'all fucking with me? That he was saying to people at that little fish fry event or whatever fuck, he ain't say that shit to brother Marcel. He ain't say that because he got hit with so many motherfucking facts, he couldn't do nothing. He sat there lost. He had that lost motherfucking look like he lost his favorite butter biscuit. Didn't know what to do, what to say, how to say this shit. He was tongue tied all the way around. So Uncle Ruckus, he caught that work. And this is what Brother Marcel is doing all the way around. I'm telling y'all, people in that audience was like, damn, who's this Brother Marcel guy? I like him. I'm going to vote for him. And that's exactly why he cut into the Democrat numbers. When he would get on that microphone and he would start dropping facts about reparations, cash payments, about the plight of black Americans, about how Clyburn has been a failure, about how the Democratic Party has had benign neglect on us for 60 years, you literally seen old ass grandparents in the audience shaking their head like, yes, baby, that's true now. <laughs> He had folks that been voting Democrat since Abraham Lincoln. They was in the crowd saying, damn, that's true. I've seen brother Marcel get on spaces that are full of supremacists and they try to come with all their bullshit backdoor tactics and he would run their ass off the block because they couldn't say nothing because not only was he coming with the facts, he was bringing the heat while he was saying them. That's what I'm talking about, foundational blueprint because you can't argue with facts and you can't argue with receipts and we got them. Everybody know we cash race receipts on a day to day. You can babble. You can ramble, you can rant, you can talk in circles all you like. But us B1s, we neutralize all that shit. Soon as you get to stumbling and fumbling your words, we gonna check that shit. Soon as you say something that don't add up, soon as you start all that tether babble, we gonna check you. That liberal babble, we gonna check you. That conservative babble, we gonna check you. That POC babble, y'all better get used to the shit because it ain't gonna change. It's only gonna get more and more real by the minute. And that's another thing about this era. We got names for anybody on that bullshit. We know how to identify who an op is, where an op is located. Tethers, we got name for your ass. Leeches of color, got name for your ass. Black and brown, no elition, we got names for your ass. If you show up to this B1 house unannounced, we will send your ass right the fuck back where you came from. No stops, one way ticket. Straight back to your home country. You better tuck your fucking chain when you come around us. <laughs> Watch yourself, cause we got them nervous right now. We got them real nervous. Foundational black Americans have put the whole world on notice. Everybody's on notice. They better watch themselves. They better watch it because we are not for games and we are not playing. We are pushing that line. Yes, we are. And anybody who's ever had any type of spite for us is getting called on it. We calling everybody out. You was on some bullshit. We calling you out. You was on some sucker shit. We calling you out. You was trying to hustle us to just come at us funny. We calling your ass out. Even if you just look like you was about to do something, we calling you out. Everybody getting shit. 
that's just how you got to do it. And I'm cool with that. Everybody get checked. I don't give a fuck. All y'all celebrities that were out here piping Joe Biden, jumping on the first plane you could to go support him and to go campaign for him. Young Jeezy, 2 Chains, Kerry Washington, Jermaine Dupree. We seen all y'all. You know what I'm saying? If your paperwork is good, then you're going to be good. If your paperwork bad, you're going to get dealt with. That's the rules of the game. And the people who are the most afraid right now is the Democratic Party electoral. Oh, yeah. They're the ones who are real shook. They're sitting there right now saying, damn, these foundational black Americans are demanding reparations. Not asking, not begging, uh, uh Cut the check, that means demand. No reparations, no vote, that means demand. I hope nobody's getting that twisted. That's a straight demand, that's not an ask. There's a difference between asking and demanding, okay, and we demand it. So they're sitting there thinking, damn, these black folks are demanding reparations. These black folks have their own media outlets. These black folks now have grassroots candidates. And that was the final straw. That was the final straw. The fact that we really, like I said, we made a G move. Foundational black Americans made the biggest G move ever. Politicians were just walking around saying they weren't going to do shit for us. They were just saying it bold. Kamala Harris just said it. Joe Biden just said it. So we said, okay, if you ain't going to do something, then we're going to go get somebody who will. And we did it. And now they're afraid of the next person we're going to get. And then the next one. And how we're going to replicate that across the whole 50 states. Trust me, they're afraid. They're not used to this. Nobody is. Everybody got real comfortable with the way they used to treat black folks. Until we showed up. And when we showed up, we threw a wrench in the game. Look how comfortable they used to be. And look how uncomfortable they are now. Imagine how they could talk to coons any way they wanted to. They used to be able to talk to sambos any way they wanted to. Shut up, go pick cotton. Shut up and dribble. Vote blue when I tell you to. That's what they were on. And now when they got to deal with us, it's a role reversal. It's a role reversal. And just simply by being on code, things change. Simply by new B1 era, things change. And simply by us certifieds stepping up to the plate, things have changed. And they're very, very scared. And I tell black folks like this. We need to continue to push our black grassroots policies. We need to continue to push our black grassroots candidates. But on top of all that, you know what we really need to do? I'm going to tell you what we really need to do. And us over here on the Black Alpha Network, we've been speaking about this for about two years now. And it is here. It has arrived. The whole cavalry is pulled up. You feel me? About six Cadillacs done pulled up, four, five trucks, and they all loaded up in the yard. We coming. We ready. What we need to do now is what I call voter reduction. Understand, if we come to the Democratic Party and we continue to put in black grassroots candidates, we can decrease their votes 7 to 10 percent every election. Fuck around and might win a couple of elections. Everybody says, man, when you going against the, the Democratic Party, listen, we're going to either beat them with our black grassroots candidates or we're going to fuck up their voter electorate so bad that they're going to come to the table wanting to talk, make a deal. Trust me when I tell you that shit. Guarantee it. If we simply get behind all these black grassroots and we simply start to push them, look what Brother Marcel did. Brother Marcel cut in to James Clyburn's election. And that's what they are most afraid about. They went there and said, how did this brother get that percentage in only six months? If we think it, they've already thought about it. They're afraid of our next move. Remember, we playing chess. We ain't playing checkers. We're making moves now ahead of them. They used to be the ones making the first move, throwing the first blow. Not anymore. Not anymore. And they're sitting there thinking, if foundational black Americans continue to push black grassroots candidates, they are going to cut into our election and it's going to swing everything everything they don't want to lose and they've been winning by giving us nothing so if we say shit we ain't gonna vote for y'all and not only are we not gonna vote for you we're gonna go vote but we just gonna go vote for our own candidate that has them shook because there's only two options either our own black grassroots candidate is going to win and they will win or our black grassroots candidate is going to cut so much into their electoral that they will lose to the Republicans. When the Democrats lose to the Republicans because the black vote went to black candidates, then shit is going to get real. And we've been talking about that over here at the Black Alpha Network for two years. Yes, we have. Shout out to Queen Alpha. And now it's all materializing. It's all materializing, man. When you on code and you on game and you pushing that line, our people get things done. You can sit back and see it. You guys right now probably see things already that the supremacist society cannot see. You see the difference between us and them. You see the difference between today and yesterday. You see the difference between what is and what was. Yes, right now we are moving. And if you have a voter reduction policy that cuts the Democrats in half, no longer can they say, I'm not gonna do that for y'all. No, they ain't gonna say that shit no more. They ain't gonna say that because they're gonna look at the numbers and say, damn, we were supposed to get, you know, 90% of the vote. We ain't get 90%. Oh, damn, this is a tight election. We're supposed to get at least 52% of the vote. 
we ain't get 52% of the vote. And they're going to start saying, well, did the Republicans get it? No, nah, they didn't get it. Well, who got it? A black grassroots candidate. And that's enough to swing the election. And the Republicans will win every time. Now what the Democrats going to do? They're going to continue their benign neglect. They're going to continue to just tell us they ain't going to do nothing. They don't even make promises. Candidates used to just make promises, say, we're going to do this for you and that for you and that for you. When was the last time you seen a Democrat even say what he was going to do? They don't even mention us by name at this point. How do you feel about black people? Well, POCs. How do you feel about black communities? Well, disenfranchised communities. How do you feel about where black people live? Well, people of color live in these conditions. They don't even call us out by name. They're not even nowhere near mentioning black folks. They say everything other than black. Like I said, they had a whole goddamn press conference about black people didn't say black one time. Joe Biden during his inauguration, he went up there and gave a speech and the only thing black he was talking to was the podium. The podium was black because he damn sure wasn't talking to foundational black Americans. Look what happened with Buffalo. Since the Buffalo assault, Joe Biden has passed three reparations checks and wrote two hate crime laws. Not one dollar has went to FBA and not one law has went to FBA. We ain't waiting for that no more. Fuck that. We moving on. If aunties and uncles and the family just can't let the Democratic Party go, well, then they can sync with the Democratic Party and we're going to be sitting here on a yacht. B1. So do you think they're going to be able to continue their benign neglect, their zero promises? No, no, no. Fuck nah. They're going to be scared. Trust me, the thing that they are the most afraid about is black Americans cutting into their votes. Under this right here, we're going to defeat the Democrats in two different ways. We're going to A, not vote for them, and we're going to B, make them lose elections to Republicans. That's exactly how we're going to do it. If you can't get them on this, you can get them on that. How's the old saying go? There's more than one way to skin a cat. All my people down south, y'all know what I'm talking about. There's more than one way to skin a cat. If we can't get the Democrats over here, we can get the Democrats right here. They're definitely afraid of a swing election. Definitely. If anybody remembers the election of 2000, I was young, but I remember. That was George W. Bush versus Al Gore. There was a guy, he was an independent guy. His name was Ralph Nader. And he ran as an independent and he took votes away from Al Gore. And they threw a fit. They threw a fit. They don't want no third party involved. They want it to be Republican and Democrat. But what happens when we start presenting black grassroots candidates? That's a third party. That's a super independent party. That's an independent party for foundationals. So we say, all right, shit, we ain't got to vote for red or blue, liberal or conservative, Democrat or Republican. We're going to vote for the foundational black American candidate. And we're going to chop into y'all vote so goddamn much that you're going to want to come to the table and negotiate. They're going to be afraid. They're not going to say it out loud. Buck Kari Seller, he's going to run around here hiding. Jim Coonburn, he gonna run around here hiding. But trust me, they have all been summoned to Massa. And Massa said, y'all better hope that them FBAs do not start presenting more black grassroots candidates. I heard somebody say the other day on the Twitter space that word on the street is brother Marcel, his name was being mentioned on Capitol Hill. Let me say that one more time, okay? Let me frame that. Marcel Dixon's name was being mentioned on Capitol Hill. If you know what Capitol Hill is, that is the highest of the high of the political atmosphere in the world, okay? If it's in America, that means it's the highest in the world. And if Brother Marcel Dixon's name was being mentioned on Capitol Hill, it can only mean one thing. And that one thing is, is foundational black Americans have pulled a G move. And we've said, if y'all ain't gonna do shit for us, then we gonna do something for ourselves. We're gonna go get our own candidates because we cannot trust the candidates that you present. Your first black president, your first black vice president, your first black White House secretary, your first black Supreme Court ain't moved the needle an inch. So we gonna move our own. And everyone knows that when foundational black Americans do for self, hold down our own family, we always go far. We don't have to guess, we don't have to come up with a new plan. Ladies and gentlemen, the plan has always been presented and it's historically proven. When we get about our own business, we take care of business. When we wait for other motherfuckers to come around and save us and wait for the savior to come swooping down, don't shit get done, you end up going backwards. That's why all the housing rates, the employment rates, the education rates have all went backwards since the civil rights era because a lot of them old Negroes was waiting for savior to come save them. B1s certifies foundationals today. We make our own moves, boss moves, which means we're going to get our own reparations, check. We're gonna have our own media, check. And now we're gonna have our own political candidates, grassroots. 
And that's how we get down on this side. And anybody also who's coming with a bunch of unspecific talk, because y'all know when it comes to us, they try to get real vague, real murky, real unclear. When it comes to other groups, they'll say them by name. They'll spell their fucking names out. When it comes to us, they understand how to play that game, that con game of let's just not be specific. Nowadays, we tell them motherfuckers, no, you address us, you will address us specifically. You better specify when you're talking about foundational black Americans. Once again, this ain't yesteryear. This is right motherfucking now. And right motherfucking now, you will address us properly. You mentioned reparations, you better get more specific. All that shit were, yeah, you know, a, a, a debt is owed. What debt? To who? Foundational black Americans? Say it right. Well, yeah, you know, um, we deserve to give them some what? Cash payments? Say it right. Don't leave these motherfuckers no out. Don't leave them no out. Because trust me, a coward will always take the way out. That is the easiest thing that they can do, and that's the easiest thing that they've always done. What we're doing now is we slamming the door in motherfuckers' faces. We making them stand on exactly what they say. See, back in the old days in the Coon Caucus and all them sellout motherfuckers, they used to give everybody an open door pass to get away with all that sleazy shit. This is why you got the trick bags and the con games and the bamboozles. That shit don't work no more. The trick bags, the con games, and the bamboozles, that shit is out of business. This is FBA, regulate, G-Shack, paperwork, snatch. And if you cannot deal with that, then you cannot deal with today. You better get used to it. Don't come in here talking about communities of color, disenfranchised, no. You better say foundational black, 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 or keep your goddamn mouth closed. We ain't let nothing slide. This the new era, man, and they gonna have to see us. And if you do not like it, you better go ahead and get on a plane and fly your ass out this country and leave or hop back over the fence that you crawled into this country with and backstroke over that goddamn river. You better flee backwards because you already fled here to your homeland. Sit the fuck down. And if anybody wants to see that old version of Foundation of Black Americans, you better turn on the slave movie, okay? Because that's the only way you're going to ever see the past again. Right now, it's all about Foundation of Black Americans, and this is the Foundational Blueprint. Yes, indeed. That's the game we own, man. That's the time. This is what we pushing. And we're all playing a role in it like we always do, like we always say. And since we playing a role in it, y'all know that we playing a role of the B1s, right? There's always been certified black folks throughout history. And every time there's always been certified blacks, there's always been counterfeits. And you still see a bunch of counterfeits today. And I'm going to talk about one of these counterfeits that been running their goddamn mouth but ain't saying nothing. Been talking but ain't doing nothing. That is basically trying to be like another counterfeit. So you got the counterfeit Jim Coonburn, and we all know that he's 387 years old. All right. He'll be 388 on Thursday. And now you got this other guy who's coming up underneath him and he wants to be the next Coonburn. He go by the name of Broken Buck Kari Sellout. Yeah, yeah, that clown. See, he been running around trying to throw his little darts and shit at Brother Marcel. And really, he's trying to throw his darts at the whole black grassroots. That's because Brother Marcel was G-checking him. Listen to this. We are not here to give our votes away. They need to do policies for us like they do for the I agree with you. Like they do for the homosexuals. No, but where's that mention of black politics? Can I, can, I, can I go now? Because I agree with you. You want to know what I agree with you on? I agree with you that the fact that I'm from Denmark, South Carolina, and those kids still go to school when they're getting in their dogs. And I'm original. So I'm yes. Let me finish. And their infrastructure's falling apart. And for longer than I've been born, we've had a quarter of shame in South Carolina. I'm from there. Let me finish. I'm from there, too. I'm from Denmark, South Carolina, but we don't have clean or potable water, but it's not the only place in South Carolina. I'm from Richmond. Let me finish, because I'm also from Denmark, South Carolina. Damn. Got Buck Kari real shook because he represents the counterfeits, the bootlicks. And the biggest threat to a bootlick or a counterfeit is certified black society are people who stand on their own, who have dignity, have heart, and represent their community. See, they are only in business by being Buck Kari sellouts. They gotta sell out. And anytime that we're on game and anytime that we're actually making momentum and we're actually pushing things forward, people like him get afraid because he's afraid that all that ass kissing he's doing, all that zaddy tap dancing he's doing, that eventually he's going to get called to zaddy's principal's office. Yes, we speak about zaddy's principal's office all the time. Let's break it down for the motherfuckers who ain't known. Zaddy's principal's office is where Massa calls in all his little coons and bootlicks anytime certified black society is getting a little too much power. And we got a whole lot of power. Anytime B1s and foundational black Americans are making heavy moves out here in these streets and they can't contain us no more and all the little trick bags that they do ain't working anymore and all their little minions that they send after us, all the democratic shields, because y'all see them every day, 
every time you turn around, these Democratic shields are everywhere. You got motherfuckers who are on CNN, got a $100,000 fucking contract on a stock exchange traded company on Twitter talking about the black grassroots. You know what that means? Let me tell you what that means. That means the motherfuckers is scared. You only address who you afraid of. Hate goes up, remember that. So the fact that they're hating on Brother Marcel, the fact that they're hating on the new black media, and the fact that they're hating on all of us means that they're scared of all of us. Trust me and believe me when I tell you that shit. So the fact that Democratic Shields have been coming out recently talking about, y'all stay away from the new black media, stay away from the internet, that's basically saying we're scared of the new black media. The fact that Buck Kari took the time out of his day to mention Marcel and mention Marcel's campaign means that he's afraid of Marcel and Marcel's campaign. If not, he wouldn't have said a goddamn thing. And the reason why they're afraid, because he knows a person like Marcel Dixon puts his little fake wannabe counterfeit ass future campaign, hopeful future in jeopardy. Yeah. And he's also afraid that when Marcel and the black grassroots gets to walking in the building, his ass is getting tossed out the building. And on top of that, and to make that even more fucked up, He's afraid that he gonna get that phone call that he gotta come on down and see Master at Zaddy's principal's office. And Zaddy gonna pull out that goddamn Master belt and whoop his ass like who the kid <laughs> Trust me, he's afraid of it. They're all afraid of it. Every last bootlick that you see on television is afraid of Zaddy's principal's office because they have one fucking job to do. And that one job is to try to attempt to contain black folks. Now, they can contain all them old Negroes but them old Negroes are gone Negroes. And now you got a bunch of certifies in the place and we're calling the shots. This black grassroots movement is the most frightening thing to anybody who's not on code. If you are not on code, this is like a category five hurricane hitting your shore. You don't wanna see it, you hate to see it, and you can't get away from it because we coming too quick. When you go to bed tonight, you close your eyes and you wake up in the morning, we're gonna have gained another 100,000 fucking miles. So some of the key points that we focus on right now is continuing to build, is continuing to make the progress that we've already established stronger. And there's really nothing we have to do other than doing what we do now, just better. Just with more time on our watch. Like I said, Brother Marcel accomplished so much in six months. Imagine if he had two years. Y'all know when we put our minds on something and we put our grip on something, can't nobody break it. We're unbreakable. And that's all we have to do is continue to focus. We'll continue to focus and we'll get all the policies that are destined for us. We'll G-check everybody that needs to be G-checked. We'll pull paperwork on anybody who needs a paperwork snatch and we'll continue to hand out these political ass whoopings. Speaking of ass whoopings, <laughs> I know y'all seen this and we got to address this shit. Please bear with me. Have y'all seen how much the goddamn elephants are on cold in Africa right now? Are the elephants all across the planet just on cold? The elephants are more on cold than the damn diaspora is. Let me ask you this question. What have you seen more? And I mean this, this ain't even a joke. It's gonna sound funny. So if you laugh, I understand, I'ma laugh too. This is how we do things, we roast. Have y'all seen more videos of Africans or just anybody in the diaspora fighting supremacy? Or have you seen elephants fighting supremacy? Which one have you seen more? Real talk, and I'm not playing. Have you seen more videos of Africans in the diaspora fighting the colonizers or have you seen the elephants fighting the colonizers? If your answer is the elephants, then that means the elephants are more on code than the whole goddamn diaspora, so I don't wanna hear shit. <laughs> I don't want nobody coming over here talking about some goddamn, come home, brother. I don't wanna hear nobody talking about some goddamn RBG flag. The damn elephants is out doing y'all. That would be the same as dogs whooping the supremacy's ass more than us over here in America. I wish I was playing. I wish this was some big joke. We were just laughing about this shit, but no, no, motherfucking no. I've seen more videos, five in one week, of elephants out there in the diaspora kicking ass on cold. Elephants is out there slapping motherfuckers with their tusk, flipping them up in the goddamn sky, trampling motherfuckers. Elephants is not playing. <laughs> Y'all better leave them alone. Elephants do not forget. I know black folks, you throw them some goddamn bones, you give them a goddamn holiday, some fucking butter biscuits. Elephants ain't going for butter biscuits. Elephants say, man, fuck your butter biscuits. They'll go give a coon a damn butter biscuit and he'll tap dance for 300 years. Talking about, man, shit done got better, y'all. We got our own Walmart now. I can use the water faucets. They give a motherfucking elephant a butter biscuit and he like, man, fuck that. Where your goddamn head at? Clink. <laughs> 
I ain't lying. It's a crazy world, man. We said this was a crazy game, but you know it's crazy as fuck. This shit is cold red. This is on 10. The damn wildlife is protecting the homeland better than the Africans are. <laughs> the Africans is out here rolling out the red carpet, getting their ass whooped on by the colonizer. The damn wildlife is holding down the fort, kicking ass. I never thought when we look around the whole goddamn world and see who else is on code. We know foundationals. We know we on code. I just never thought that when I looked around the world to see what other group is on code, never thought the only motherfuckers on this planet right now, this summer, who seem to be fighting supremacy is foundational black Americans and elephants. <laughs> Everybody else is tap dancing. What the fuck? <laughs> Moving on, if we can. Slow it down. Now, since we speaking about slowing it down, Let's talk about a group that is slowed down to the point they ain't even moving no goddamn up. They just stuck. Can't get off the ground. Ain't nobody listening to them. They hashtag is trash. They talking points is trash. Their leaders are trash. No movement. No momentum. Only thing left with them is a fucked up hairline and a plastic strap on. That's it. So with all that information right there, you should already know who I'm talking about. A dunce, or as I call them, the American Democrats of slavery, because that's all they are and that's all they've ever been. The wool has been pulled off, the layers have been peeled back, and they've been exposed for what the fuck they've always been. Another Democratic Shield organization, another Democratic Shield hashtag. All A dunce was was the Twitter version of Black Lives Matter. And if you notice, a lot of these groups, they have interchangeable members. Half them folks that are talking about some A dunce. Then was the same folks talking about BLM. Yup, yes indeed. D-Ray or whatever the fuck his name is, that ain't nothing different than he vet Carnell. You know what I'm saying? The mama of the community, <laughs> you ain't anybody's mama. In order to be somebody's mama, that means you have to actually be able to have kids. And we know that does not apply to you because you cannot have kids with plastic. Strappies cannot have babies, okay? You gotta actually have the real thing. Anyway, we ain't roasting nobody in a minute over here on the Black Alpha Network, so go ahead, pull up a chair, and let's go to work. Anybody who knows us, we came into the game independent, focused on the issues, focused on empowerment, and staying clear of all the nonsense. The only thing that'll make us lace up them boots and put on that goddamn hard hat is when folks is out of line and out of pocket. And when you out of line and out of pocket, it is my pleasure to roast you. And that's what we are gonna do right here, right now. He vet Carnell and the other guy, whatever his name is, <laughs> that guy, all they are and all they've ever been is Democratic Shields. And we all start to see it and we were all calling it out a long time ago. They did the typical nowadays bait and switch is what you see from these groups. They always come out on some pro-black shit. That's why we gotta watch the terminologies and we gotta watch what people say very close. The verbiage is very important. They came out on some pro-black stuff, talking about reparations. They basically sat back and seen what black Americans were talking about. And they said, let's use that so we can get support from them. And then in the middle of the night, we'll switch over. That's the same thing Black Lives Matter did. They came out talking about no justice, no peace, hands up don't shoot put out a hashtag got people to retweet the hashtag and in the middle of the night they turned it into an organization that's the hustle nowadays that's the bait and switch they have a hashtag they steal our words they become an organization the average person didn't even know black lives matter was an organization until after they retweeted the hashtag the average person didn't know a dunce was an organization until after they retweeted the hashtag so you got to be real cautious of some of these groups and there's other ones out there y'all know what i'm talking about you gotta be real careful when these groups come out with these hashtags because you'll start hashtagging some shit then they'll flip on you if you're gonna hashtag something hashtag something that we all know for a fact is solid hashtag some shit that we all know for a fact is real fba b1 certified black these are for the people by the people from the people it gets no realer than this these other groups they're just shields and cover groups their Democrat hashtags, liberal hashtags, the Biden-Harris campaign. They got folks sitting around right now looking at all of our verbiage, looking at all our words, and then purposely twisting them, and then purposely putting a bullshit falsified hashtag behind it, and really next thing you know you hear shit like, vote blue down ballot. Doesn't vote blue down ballot sound exactly like vote blue no matter who? What's any different than the Democrats saying vote blue no matter who, than a dunce saying vote blue down ballot? That lets you know that they're on the same team, and that's the Democratic Shield team. 
Now they were running around here talking all this pro-black shit and then they try to slide vote blue down battling in the equation. And then people try to call them out on it, then they got upset. And then eventually after they got upset, they got further exposed. After they got further exposed, they just disappeared. Disappeared and now they just jealous. They jealous, they angry, they bitter. You know, they're like the motherfucker who thought they were hot and they come to find out they was really just lukewarm. And by the time they realized they were lukewarm, they were cold as fuck, couldn't move, couldn't walk, couldn't talk, don't nobody listen. They that motherfucker at the party over there in the corner just running his mouth and nobody's even paying attention. They used to listen to your stories, now your stories is old. They used to hear the little songs you used to sing, no one cares. Y'all know the old, old artists that throws concerts, there'd be like five motherfuckers in it? That's pretty much what they are. That's pretty much what they are. Only difference is that they don't even have five people. They might have, what, two people there? They family members? Because everybody else has exposed them and like I said, stepped right over their ass. A Dunce is gone. Like, gone, irrelevant as fuck. Irrelevant. You got people right now that got 200 followers on Instagram that get hashtagged more than A Dunce does. And they thought they was hot. They was coming out here, you know, on CNN, talking about we done arrived. They thought they was gonna make history. That's why Strappy running around here talking about she the mama of the community. That's why uh, the other guy, I don't even know dude's name, Tone something. Tone babbles. That's what he is. Yeah, him. That guy. No one knows who these people are. They're done. It's over with. And they just got to accept it. And you see the same thing that happens when people fall off. They get bitter. They get spiteful. But they also get laughed at. And we laughing at their ass. What Jay-Z say? You fell from top 10 to not mention it all. <laughs> they not even mentioned. They don't even make top 10 lists no more. You know what I'm saying? Irrelevant ain't even the word for this shit. Non-existent pretty much is the only thing I can think of. You know, anytime you come up is only when you're getting roasted. That's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. No one even talks about them unless they're roasting them. They done turn into, um, what's that motherfucking name? You know when you can't remember somebody and you be like, damn, what's, what's so-and-so name? It'll take you 10 minutes to even recall their name. That's pretty much what they are. And then when motherfuckers calling their name, they call them by what they really been. The American Democrats of Slavery. They were really a democratic shield organization the whole time, whole time. They will not be remembered for anything. The only thing that they will be remembered for is basically being Black Lives Matter 2.0. And you've seen what we did to them. Black Lives Matter, they're irrelevant, non-existent. Ran they ass off the turf, off the field, out the paint, straight off the block, home. It's the same thing that's happened with A-Dunce. So we batting 100 right now. Y'all know what time it is, man. We knocking them out. We knocking them out the park, cross the street, through somebody's car window. That's what we doing. I told you, Grand Slams, everybody coming home. This is what it is. So if you come around, be one society, you will get your paperwork snatched. You will get G-checked. You will get exposed. So if you think you gonna come up in here and be camouflaged for 300, 400 fucking years, you got a thing coming. You got another thing coming. I'm telling you, you better go back to Selma. Selma's about the only place for you, okay? Eventually, Hevet and Tone Babble, they're gonna be broadcasting live from Selma because that's gonna be the only place that accept them. They're gonna do a, a live broadcast from Edmund Pettus Bridge. <laughs> Because don't nobody else want them. That's the only place in the world that'll accept and welcome your cooning. So you better stay on that side. Because over here on the certified side, we don't rock with you. We don't rock with you. We exposed your asses three fucking years ago. So keep on moving that away. Because this way is only for the real ones. Bet that. And everybody said, man, you know, we get agent vibes from them. I said, vibes? We got to get to the point where we confirm things. Ain't no goddamn vibes. Hell yeah, they was fucking on some agent shit. They was working for the Democratic Party. That was Democratic agents, Democratic shields. The same way they're sending out all these shields like broken buck car sellers. Luke Campbell, he was on it too. It's the same thing they were doing with Hevet Carnell and Tone Babel. It was the same thing, but they all ran into the same problem. And that is certified black society, foundational black Americans, and the B1 Brigade ain't going for the bullshit. We recognize them. This new era, we do not make it comfortable for Coonan. We do not make it comfortable for sellouts, and it is not safe for Democratic shields. The same goes for that other lady. What's her name? Uh, Nina Turner? Nina Turner? Nina Turner, right? <laughs> she run around here all day long talking all that fake pro-black shit. She do that same shit that Scam Master J used to do. You know when they act all tough? Acting tough don't mean that you thorough. It just means that you're acting, all right? They like to come out there and talk all that wild shit. Y'all remember Scam Master J and them was doing that same thing. We gonna do this now. This what's gonna happen. We gonna get some laws up in here. That's the same thing that little Nina Turner chick be doing. She be running around here talking about black folks need to get this and we need to get that and get this. When you ask her what's this, this, and that, she can't get specific then. She can't get specific. She'll say all these other things, but it's never specified. All right, so basically, she's just acting. She's just putting on the dog and pony show. She's fronting like she's down for us. And she's one of these folks who thinks by being loud, that means you black. It's really the black version of the yo, yo, yo. They think if you say yo, 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 that means you're black, right? 
It's like Fat Joe. Fat Joe thinks just because he grew up in the projects that that makes him black. Poorness does not equal black. Let's get this straight. Neither does being loud. That does not equal black. Black is way deeper than being loud or being from the fucking projects. Okay, let's get that straight. And anybody running around here trying to perpetrate that fraud is getting their paperwork snatched the fuck up. That's why Nina Turner, Fat Joe, all these folks have gotten their paperwork snatched up and it came back dirty. And if your paperwork come back dirty, then you going where? You get thrown on the corner like it's trash day. It's only right that dirty paperwork goes to the trash can. So yeah, these are these democratic shills. We done exposed them, we done roasted them. They're irrelevant, they can't come around us anymore. So they are gonna go over there to Coon Island and do whatever the fuck they wanna do, but they cannot step foot right here. And that is once again, for the millionth time, the difference between this B1 era and eras of the past. We are unapologetic. Everybody used to say unapologetic because it sounds good, but no, we say that shit, we mean it. And they know we mean it. There's two types of people. There's a person who says it, and you know they just saying it because it sounds good. And then there's the person who says it, and you know they mean that shit. And when we say it, we mean that shit. Speak it, believe it, receive it, and everybody's gotta feel it. So this unapologetic era and this B1 energy has shot right through the country so fast, it has lapped around the whole goddamn planet. So quick that we done made it home back in time to watch 227. Speaking of 227, happy birthday to Marla Gibbs, our FBA elder, much love and respect from Foundational Black America. I've always loved her because she's always reminded me of my grandmother, always. So while we sit here all the time and these black folks be crying over Betty White and they be crying over all these W celebrities, we got our own right here who are foundational black Americans and it's time that we represent our own. I don't want to see folks throwing fits over everybody else while we got our own elders, we got our own beloveds right here, right now. So I send the biggest certified salute from foundational black America to our foundational black American beloved queen, Marla Gibbs, happy birthday to to you much love and respect there's no place like home and i mean no place child yes indeed and you know that brings me to another point and the point being is that we got to represent ourselves we got to we got to continue to represent ourselves we know us right here in b1 society us foundational black americans we represent ourselves to the core to the maximum and we got to continue to do that because every time you turn around it's someone trying to disattach us from our lineage that's really the number one goal y'all that's the number one goal in the united states and across this planet is to detach foundational black americans from their heritage from their lineage and from our culture Every time you see Juneteenth and they just won't quit with the red, black, and green. They just won't stop. We tell them that it's red, white, and blue, foundational black America, and they still do the red, black, and green. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. They're running shows right now on the History Channel trying to tie Juneteenth into every other group. The same way they try to tie us into every other group politically. And now they try to Africanize Juneteenth. The same way they're trying to tell us, why don't y'all just go back to Africa? I told you, they are upset that FBA is lineage strong. So now they're trying to throw all this African stuff in here. When has the dominant society ever supported Africa? When has the dominant society ever gave a damn about red, black, and green? When the fuck have they ever cared about any of that? The only time the dominant society seems to care about Africa is when they're trying to blend them in with foundational black Americans so they can dilute our lineage and they can dilute all the momentum we have right now. That's it. That's it, be real careful of the people who've been running around here for years, hating on Africa, calling them shithole countries. Now all of a sudden they're saying, hey, let's put up an African flag. Let's throw up RBG colors. Let's talk about the whole diaspora. Let's talk about black folks all on one big unity team. Let's try to get the foundational black Americans to move back to Ghana. Now all of a sudden they like Africa, right? Now all of a sudden they represent and promote Africa. No, they only do that so they can take the pride and the power that foundational black Americans have gained and they can take Juneteenth, something that represents our pride and they can lump it up with all the other Africans in the world. It's the same way they try to lump up our hate crime bills with every other group in the world. Same way they try to lump up our reparations with every group in the world. They don't do this for the 4th of July. They don't say the 4th of July and then show a French flag. They don't show the 4th of July and then show a German flag or a Belgian flag or an Italian flag. No, it's 4th of July for the United States of America. But when it comes to black folks, Juneteenth is for Ghana, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, Jamaica, Haiti. Nah, nah, that's bullshit. And bullshit gets regulated and called the fuck out on this side and that's exactly what we're doing we see them trying to africanize our culture the same way last year they were trying to poc our culture 
Y'all remember last year when they were saying Mexicans really started Juneteenth? Technically, it was people of color who started the holiday, so we should all celebrate it together as one big family. Now it's technically, it's really for all black people in the world, and we should all celebrate it as another big family. And you know, you got to be low budget trying to get in on somebody else's holiday. That'd be like us going to Ireland and trying to get in on the Irish holiday. Foundational black Americans, we don't hop our asses on no plane, go over to Africa and try to celebrate their holidays and claim them like they're ours. We don't go over to Europe, hop on no plane and try to go celebrate European holidays like they're ours. We don't even go and celebrate holidays in Canada like they're ours. Black folks don't go down to Mexico and celebrate Mexican holidays. No, your holidays for you, ours is for us. You ought to be ashamed of yourself being from the motherland big ass continent and you trying to come over here and get in on our shit. That's why the elephants is out there more cold than your ass. <laughs> I don't even see the elephants out here trying to represent Juneteenth, but your ass is. Sit down. And y'all seen some of the foolish shit out there. You seen W's running around with all this Juneteenth clothing. Y'all made a monument of a hair pick. Ain't that something? Boy, boy, boy. This is what you're dealing with. This is what you're dealing with. And that's why they ass is getting G-checked in the process. So I'm talking from television shows, politically, socially. Every time you turn around, they're trying to lump us in with somebody. The White House just put out a statement. They said on Juneteenth, we're going to celebrate racial equality and racial unity. A bunch of fucking lump words. They're always trying to lump us in with somebody. No one ever talks specific. Same way we was getting on them other groups before. They never want to talk specific with us. And all these other groups from around the world, they don't mind coming here and sliding into our culture. They don't mind it because they don't have a backbone to stand on their own. They don't. It's funny that the group they say has no culture is a culture that they all want to steal from. Is there anything the foundational black Americans have created that another group doesn't try to say is theirs? I mean, everything. Things that are factually, undeniably ours, they'll still say is theirs. Juneteenth is about American slavery. And then they say it's about African slavery. I mean, it doesn't matter. They just try to take everything. Hip hop, graffiti, break dancing. It don't matter. You ever notice this? There's never no documentation of any of these other groups creating something that's ours. They only do that shit with their motherfucking mouth. What they say, you ain't running nothing but your mouth? They ain't running nothing but their motherfucking mouth. That's it. They say, we created this. You ain't got no evidence. They say, we created that. You ain't got no evidence. When it come to us, our shit is all documented. I can pull out a list right now of every invention that a foundational black American has created, and that's only the ones on the books. There's another five million that isn't on the books. You want to see what foundational black Americans have created? Open your door and step outside. And if you're already outside, just look around. Foundational Black Americans created this country and these other groups are trying to say what's ours is theirs. You're not going to sit here and dog Foundational Black Americans and then turn around and try to act like we one big family when it's convenient. We have pulled the plug on that. Now everybody's going to have to move on our terms, on our motion, on our step. Foundational Black Americans are paving the way, blazing the way, and we're doing it with a foundational blueprint. The blueprint has been laid out and all we're doing right now is two-stepping in that motherfucker. Easy work. So some of the key points that we focus on right now is continuing to build, is continuing to make the progress that we've already established stronger. And there's really nothing we have to do other than doing what we do now, just better. Just with more time on our watch. Like I said, Brother Marcel accomplished so much in six months. Imagine if he had two years. And that's all we have to do is continue to focus. We'll continue to focus and we'll get all the policies that are destined for us. We'll G-check everybody that needs to be G-checked. We'll pull paperwork on anybody who needs a paperwork snatch. And we'll continue to hand out these political ass whoopings all the way live. But thank you, everybody, for pulling up to the Black Alpha Cast. I appreciate all my subscribers. I send you all a certified salute. Foundational Black American, Lineage Strong, Certify Summer. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Let's keep building on what we've already got. We all know that on this planet, there's only one version of us and everybody else is just hating, copying, or jealous. And no matter what category they fall in, that category falls behind. Know that. I wanna make sure everybody stays focused though. We gotta stay focused, we gotta stay strong, stand together as always, because they got their eyes set on us. And they're always scheming and plotting and scamming to come up with something to divert us, to knock us off our pivot. But you know we stand on our square, 10 toes down. I love everybody out there, man. When I say I love the family, I love the family. I mean that shit. Foundational black Americans, we are truly all we got. And I wouldn't have it any other way. You guys heard me say this before. I said if we went to battle and it was just us, I'm not raising my hand trying to find new recruits. I'm not saying can somebody come help us. No, we're going to get the job done with who's already here. If you already here and you already in this circle, as I call the winner's circle, the boss's table, we've already won. All we're doing right now is taking a fucking victory lap. Remember that. 
How do you know we've already won? Because we're still here. If we didn't win already, we wouldn't be here now. So the fact that we're still here, they're still hating, they still planning, that lets you know that foundational black Americans run the yard. Thank you. But yo, you guys smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel however you found the video. I salute everybody out there. Take care of yourselves. I wish you health, positivity, good energy, and big money. Make sure you get that. All right, family, one love to all the brothers, sisters, kings, queens, the goddess and the gods from the Black Alpha Network. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we own it 24 seven. Appreciate the love. Take care of yourself and always remember, no matter what the fuck they say, no matter what the fuck they think, black is beautiful and beautiful is always black. Bye.